Well, good morning, Leeds United fans. I hope you're all doing fantastically well. It's Connor. We're back here with another video. We're back here with uh, a bit of an update, financial update. So stay tuned for the whole uh, 10 minutes probably of this video. I am actually heading away this week. Uh, but listen, I'm going to still be providing you with content every single day. So don't you worry about that. I'm going to try to provide you with a bit of positivity, mental strength, fortitude, whatever. We can stick by until... The last three games of this championship season. Let me know what you think in the comment section below regarding Leeds United and everything that's going on. As I said, head on over to the Patreon if you want some bonus content. I might put some bonus bits this week, some behind-the-scenes bits as well up on there, which will, will be quite nice and a little bit of a relief from what's going on at this minute, moment in time. Now, all the proceeds go towards the channel, everybody. Shout-out to Timbo, who became a YouTube member. Shout-out to Shane and Alan as well, who also became Patreon members. So, <clears throat> yeah. An interesting weekend, and we're going to speak about, you know, straight off the bat, we're going to speak about the loan situation, the financial situation, which is um, which is surrounding Leeds United at this moment in time, so which can be implicated by what's going on really. So Verkus, who is the um, Borussia Mönchengladbach director, has come out and said that Leeds United have a very, very strong valuation of Max Verber, <clears throat> and essentially he's paraphrasing throughout the rest of the quote and says that Mutch and Gladbach are not going to pay that money. And it's so interesting how after this weekend, suddenly he's coming out with quotation marks. And he was saying this previously with Verkus and the Mudge and Gladback sort of representatives that Leeds are, are holding a high price for Max Verber. I think it's around 12 million quid. And uh, essentially they don't value him at that, but they really want to keep his services. So they are going to be looking to reduce that now. What's going to help Mudge and Gladback with their reduction of that fee? It will be if Leeds United remain in the championship, almost certainly. Leeds are going to be able to demand that value. It's not even a high value. It really isn't, but, you know, especially when you look at championship players and what they go for nowadays, it's, it's a lot more expensive than what it used to be back in the day when you used to be able to pick up Ross McCormack for about 20p and Luciano Becchio and co. <clears throat> so, yeah, it's, it, it feels like, you know, Mudge and Gladbach are paying pay a very hard line and negotiation-wise, they are strong. We all know they're going to be in the, the Bundesliga, obviously, next season. If Leeds are in the championship, then the valuation of him is going to reduce and Leeds need money next season if they are to pay back obviously there's 73 million quid to pay back by june um and it is going to be a, a a bit of a fire sale if leeds do remain in the championship i think that's abundantly clear but on the positive side if we are to go to the premier league then leeds have a very very strong valuation that we have a strong um point of which to negotiate with these clubs you know you look at <clears throat> mudge and gladback and max verber well it's 12 million or nothing mate and if he's had a decent season out there which we all know he has that would mean that maybe other German clubs are looking at him. You know, there's a fair few German clubs at this moment in time who are looking at centre-backs, Frankfurt and Freiburg being a couple as well. So maybe keep an eye on that one as well, because if Leeds are to reach the fantasy land, if Leeds United are to, to make that that next step, then, you know, I think that's I think that'd be that'd be brilliant when it comes to negotiation. We know that quite sensitive Somerville, we know that William Yonto, Rutter, Archie Gray will all come in for interest, but doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because we hold such a strong position. We're probably going to have to sell at some point, but the financial sort of brilliance that comes with the Premier League is, you know, the revenue, the overseas revenue, all this sort of stuff, and you just getting that parachute payment, you know, in the championship is, is, is a massive, massive difference between what you get in the Premier League. So it'd be a huge, huge investment for Leeds getting back up there, and it'd really help us dealing with this money that we owe back. And Verba. Weber's valuation being reduced, but then it being normalised is all is all really going to be what happens between Leeds and and the, in the next three games. Really, Joe Rodon, it's coming from the Spurs end that he's been in communications with the club. That comes from Tottenham Hotspur World and and a fair few others on the site as well. I know Alistair Gold has murmured it as well <clears throat> that he's been in constant discussion with Spurs and. You know, he's, he, he, they are they are more than willing for him to leave the club, and that is what that is what is being quoted this morning. That Tottenham are happy for him to leave, and they're happy for him to leave anywhere. So, you know, does Leeds' his position hold strong? We saw him mention last week that he's loved every single minute of his time at Leeds United. It does feel that with with Joe, whatever the outcome, he'd come to Leeds, and maybe I'm been a bit of a passion merchant there, and maybe I'm been unrealistic and. I always I felt I fell in love with Ben White as well, but I don't know. I feel like a, a little bit more of a connection with Joe. I feel I think maybe it's because he shows a lot more passion on the pitch than Ben White ever did. But <clears throat> he does feel with Joe that he genuinely wants to be here, and I do think that Welsh contingent has really helped him. Connor Roberts has said he doesn't really care what 
what state Leeds are in. He'd, he'd love to be part of it in the future, which I thought was quite a brave thing to say. But he's a contract at another club, but obviously his contract is expiring in the summer. It'd be a great move for him to come to Leeds. He's loving every minute of it, you can tell. Ethan is a is a is a permanent player, and Dan is a permanent player as well. So you don't get that at many clubs, like four really, really good friends being together and playing on the football pitch. And listen, you're hoping that's gonna help Leeds when it comes to the running, friendships, partnerships, cohesion, synergy. You know, they've had, they've done it for Wales. Can they now do it for Leeds United in terms of getting that extra bit of juice, squeezing that extra bit from the last part of the season? But in terms of financial position, once again, Leeds are not going to be strong when it comes to next season. Are Leeds going to be able to do that? You know, with the amount of money we own back, <clears throat> we owe to, to these clubs when it comes to transfer dealings, the cutbacks that we're going to have to do, the reduced transfer fees. Are Leeds then going to have, going to be able to go out and do a Joe Road on? A lead's gonna then you know gonna be be able to go out and offer you know Con Roberts a bumper contract. Are they gonna be able to do that? These are all the questions with remaining in the championship. This is why you don't want to be there. And I was seeing online some people saying, "Oh, I don't mind the championship. You're absolutely deluded." If you think right now this club healthily, financially can stay in this division and prosper and be okay next season, the season after the season after that, then you're deluded. Now, I'm not saying next season is going to be <clears throat> cataclysmic. I'm not going to say that, but we're going to see if Farker is here, the true credentials of Daniel Farker, if we are in the championship, because he's not going to have this Avenger squad to deal with. It is going to be a completely reduced squad where all our superstars likely are going to have to have been sold on you know, for us to fit in with the accounts. So, yeah, and just championship football. So we're going to be a much reduced side next season in the championship. So that is not what I want at all. So, <clears throat> and you want to, you always want to be competing at the highest level. Of course you do. Like, that's, you know, that's what football's all about. It's, not, it's just such a loser mentality saying you want to stay here and win games all the time. Like, I just see that as, as a strange mentality. But the uh, EFL Awards last night, we saw Christensio Somerville, Jorginho, Rutter and Ethan Ampadu make the team of the season. Archie um, obviously got young player of the season and Cry, Cree won um, player of the season as well, which was great. Fantastic accolades for Leeds. It just, it just feels at the minute, doesn't it, that, it's, <clears throat> that it just means nothing at the minute. Like they, they desperately need some sort of injection of, of something, creativity, ingenuity, class, quality, confidence. They just need something because all of these awards... You know, need to be for something. They need to be for something. I know individual accolades is great. They're probably going to all going to get assigned by top teams at some point. But you know, you want to you want to get the team up as well. And Archie's a Leeds fan. He'll want to get the team up. You know, Cree's been part of the fabric for a while now. He'll want to get the team up. Jorginho Rutter loves it. You know, he does. And Ethan Ampadu's who's captain material. But it all just pales into insignificance if they're not to make it. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, everybody. But they've just got to get the, they've got to get three wins. Three wins out the next three and. You know, I know we were talking about <clears throat> set pieces the other day. Currently leads to the third worst in the division when it comes to set pieces. And we've created the second most set pieces in the division. Think about that for a start. On the back of that, we are third bottom when it comes to aerials one um, in general on the football pitch, which is crazy with the amount of clean sheets we had and all this sort of stuff. But yeah, it, um, there is a lot of stats that Leeds need to work on now. Daniel Farker needs to work on, quite frankly. Um, I, I've posed a lot of criticism his way and I think it's completely justified. You get people in the comments section saying, get behind the team, Daniel Varker's the best, with no actual evidence and no sort of argument as to what I'm saying. And that's not me saying something in, in an arrogant perspective because 99% of you guys think the exact same. The stats, there's data, there's everything that back up what I'm saying when it comes to Daniel Varker's Leeds United right now, the style of play. Um, the, the the current funk that we are in, the margins that we can improve on to get us to that next level, aka the Premier League, all of these are backed up. I read these stats up to you, so it's point evidence explained. When you just get people coming on and saying, I like Farker, Leeds are the best. It just It's literally just pointless conversation. So I really, really appreciate you guys who come on and give you thoughts. I read them all and I take them all in. I find them interesting. There's some really, really intelligent comments in there. So shout out to all of you guys. I mean, even if you disagree with me, you know, Scott, who we've had on the channel before, who I know he'll love, he'll love a, a mention on here and we'll get him on again. Scott's brilliant. Disagreeing with me at the weekend, but we're having a proper conversation about it. Let's have a proper conversation about it and, and, and just keep sort of like, you know, you, you, you sort of like, you know, two emotive feelings out of it and, 
you know, let's let's have a conversation about what's going on and what we need to improve because we all have the same common interest. It's Leeds United and we're all passionate, but some of us have different points of views and that's all right in life. Guys, let me know what you think in the comment section below. What would you do with Verber Rodon? Are you a little bit worried about that valuation? Would you keep Verber next season no matter what? What would you do with Joe Rodon? Would you be keeping him on next season, even if we're in the Premier League? I know some people don't believe he'll be good enough for the Premier League, hence why he's not got enough minutes. That would be interesting to hear what you guys think on that one. And tell me, fundamentally, what does Daniel Farker need to change? Guys, it's been a pleasure. I'll see you in a bit.